Hello, my name is Connie Liu. I'm an undergraduate at MIT, and today we're going to be doing concept questions about the evolution of eukaryotes. So the focus of today's concept questions will be on endosymbiosis. So we'll look at this question first. What organelles were probably acquired by endosymbiosis? So for this question, if you answered mitochondria and chloroplasts, you'd be correct. And then the next question, we'll be looking at the evidence that allows us to make this conclusion. So what are some pieces of evidence of endosymbiosis? So for this question, there's a few different answers. Um, these are all different pieces of evidence that a lot of scientists have looked at. Endosymbiosis, of course, is still a theory. Um, it's known as the endosymbiotic theory. And uh, we obviously cannot get confirmed conclusions about it because no scientists were alive back in the time that endosymbiosis would have occurred. But um, here are some of the different pieces of evidence that scientists have been looking at that look like they point towards a um, endosymbiosis having occurred for mitochondria and chloroplasts. So the first piece of evidence is that both mitochondria and chloroplasts have separate genetic information. They actually have DNA within their organelles, which is kind of odd because no other organelle has that. But um, because they have their own genetic information, it kind of tips off scientists that um, these, these organelles may have been independent uh, self-standing cells in the past. Another reason that um, they may, that comes up that, backs up the fact that they um, may have been independent cells in the past is that they also have their own ribosomes. And ribosomes are very important in order to be um, self-sustaining and able to create your own proteins from that genetic information to begin with. So this is another piece of evidence that points towards um, mitochondria and chloroplasts having been acquired by eukaryotic cells, whereas before they may have just been self-standing cells. And the third one would be that they have a double membrane. So the reason that this uh, piece of evidence is important is if you look at a eukaryote, what is um, conjectured to have happened is that if this was, say, a mitochondria, the eukaryote would have enveloped this mitochondria, and then in the process of enveloping it, it creates a second membrane around that mitochondria. Um, this could even be a chloroplast as well in this situation. And that's why it seems that the double membrane is a result of endosymbiosis. So those are the main pieces of evidence we have towards endosymbiosis today.